I suspect it's going to be a short meeting today, given that half of the maintainers are heads down for the security release. Uh, so I just added in a reminder, there's a security release today, uh, hopefully actually at noon PDT this time. Last time was a bit of a kerfuffle. I would say, I don't, I don't know that a ton of people are going to be uh, hanging on proxy protocol. So um, do you want to, do you want to talk to that? Uh, Weston, do you want to talk to that now? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the background of this is that um, at DigitalOcean, we have some workloads um, running on HA proxy and it supports using proxy protocol in their HTTP mode uh, or with HTTP forwarding rules. And we don't necessarily control um, some of the backends there, their customers um, backends. And we'd like to swap out proxy or HA proxy for Envoy. Mm -hmm. um, so to do that, we'd need to be able to essentially um, have proxy protocol in HTTP mode. What, um, what does that mean exactly? Can you give a brief description of that? Um, so to have it in HTTP mode, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, um, Envoy has um, uh, the ability to do proxy protocol for um, the TCP proxy. Um, but not using HTTP connection manager. So if you're using the um, terminating filter of the yeah, TCP proxy, you can use it. Um, you can't with HTTP connection manager. And the reason this is, is because of connection pooling. Um, so for um, TCP proxy, it's a one-to-one -one, um, for clients and then server connections. And uh, it's needed because it's like as part of a, the proxy protocol, um, the first thing you send on a connection is the the, the proxy protocol header. Oh, um, I see. So, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't work yeah. if you're uh, connection pooling. Um, so yeah, we would like to move some workloads over to Envoy, but we'd need it to work with um, HTTP connection manager. So I looked into the HA proxy code a little bit and it seems like um, like it uses a hash for the connection pools. And it if there's if you're using proxy protocol, it adds that header to the hash essentially. So that basically no one's gonna get the same pool. Um, just yeah, I to do, thought yeah. Envoy actually did that too. <laughs> okay. So oh. yeah, that's what I was wondering, like if um I heard it like didn't work with it. Like there's a ticket open recently by someone that wanted support in it um, in HTTP connection manager for proxy protocol. And then Matt just said like, you should use X forwarded for, which I mean, is the better solution if you can use which it. Which you should, but sometimes you can't legit. Yeah, right, yeah right. we can't that because yeah. of customers already expecting this. Um, yeah, so, so my guess is we're actually pretty close to having this work. There might be a bug somewhere, but I, like almost everything is in place for this to work. Okay. Yeah, I remember specifically actually when we implemented proxy protocol, we didn't do the hashing and we fixed it real fast as a bug. Yes. So yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that thanks too. Thanks again yeah. for that, yeah. Um, so so what I do, again, generally as, as things go on Envoy, you know, it's, it's if you're willing to write it yourself, you can write it yourself. So yeah. if you guys have a need for this, um, you know, if you're comfortable doing it, I would suggest playing around. If you need pointers, you can tag me, Alyssa Vilk, on Slack because okay. uh, yeah. I did the TCP proxy proto support. Um, you know, and if it works great, if it doesn't, you know, just tag me and I can I can probably give you some code pointers as to what you need to, to get it working. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. if it was unclear to us, the one who also added like the TCP proxy protocol stuff oh, as well. Oh, duh, right. Okay, so, hi. I had not. I, yeah, I'm no worries. Excited. And yeah. yeah, thanks for fixing that issue. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think it's doable. Again, as Matt said, it's preferred to not do it. But if you if you have an actual need, it, it makes sense to add it. And uh, okay. yeah, so I'd say go for yeah. it and uh, ping me if you need help. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll probably be implementing that then. Also, if you want to slash assign that issue your way, just so folks know that someone's picking it up, that'd be great sure. too. Cool, that is literally all on the agenda. So if anyone else has things they want to talk about, speak now. Uh, yes, so one thing is the release. Um, so I, I think I have, you know, just going through the documents and uh, all of the, uh, you know, the checklists, I think I have everything 
staged and prepared. Uh, my question is mostly around timing. When do we actually start moving stuff to the open source? Is it like exactly at noon PDT? Do we start earlier? Uh, that, you know, I, I think I would need, uh, you know, if we start later, I might need some help or somebody else to do because uh, my day might be cut short by kids returning from school if it's after three o'clock. Um, so that that's my my first question. I think traditionally we've said that we're actually dropping the the patches at at noon, which okay. Um, so it's kind of ad hoc. I think I think basically we just don't want people to be scrambling. Um, Right, right. So we, we have a dependency on Istio. We we probably don't want to uh, drop them earlier or significantly earlier than Istio, which has the same release, um, you know, constraints. So uh, so it, it should be, I think, be at least noon PDT. But I don't know if there are any other processes that need to start before that. Well, generally, in order to actually release at noon, you need to start the release process a little bit earlier because it takes forever. But um, but that does open up the patches. So I would I would suggest just pinging the STO folks and, and asking if they have a problem with us doing that. Yeah, I already did ping them, and uh, they did say that they would prefer us not to like actually you know put stuff in the open earlier. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's do it then, and just ping on maintainers to see if you can do a handoff. Last time. You know, we had like three or four people helping out, and it went until like 10 p.m. Eastern. But that was a fiasco and should not happen on the regular. So, um, okay. it, if you need to hand off, there's there's people who can, who can, uh, you know, make sure that CI continues and and tag when CI finishes and such. Okay, so I'll post on Slack and see if there are any. Um, yeah, any you've you've done all the hard work. Like the rest of it's just process, and and there's like five of us who can handle process. So. Okay. Um. And uh, the other question that I wanted to bring up and see, you know, where where we should take this is the um, um, the large filters that are sort of non-core to, let's say, a lot of Envoy customers. Oh yeah. Uh, and the discussion that we had on Slack uh, yesterday on actually adding maybe a contribute, you know, some contrib directory where we have different SLOs, maybe different security postures, um, mostly to minimize the the amount of work that maintainers need to do reviewing um, fairly large code drops um, and improving velocity for the people who actually maybe depend on that code for their products. Yeah, so just for people who weren't on maintainer Slack, essentially we've had a number of large new filters dropped on Envoy recently, which are like totally reasonable, awesome features to have. But when you drop like 7,000 lines of code uh, and you know we have the whole security posture to deal with and not that many maintainers who can merge new things, it ends up being a problem. So we've talked about maybe having a contrib directory where people can move faster and we have a, a lower fidelity and don't necessarily do security releases for until things are hardened, um, kind of unclear how to maintain velocity and scale the community. I think it's just a standard, you know, project growing pains thing. So, right. We also have filters uh, that are fairly specific to like a particular technology and uh, require may require some domain knowledge. Like this filter is for some, you know, LT, LTE uh, protocols and uh, I, I looked at it and it has its own connection manager. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't think well, I actually, you know. And, and that's something that you can you can tag me on. But like, if it's TCP, <laughs> uh, ideally we don't have to do that. It is HTTP plus, like that's that's how I would describe it. Uh, well, in that case, great. We have a connection manager that can do TCP and codecs on top of that. So let's let's use that rather than reinvent the wheel. And I can I can drive by comment on that. I, I guess I guess also we have to discuss what the bar is for contrib. I, I would say we're going to want things that lend in contrib that are generally useful to actually migrate eventually. 
And so we still should say like use common utilities and don't reinvent the wheel. I don't know if, if folks have thoughts on that because uh, you know, again, it does slow, th slow things down if you have to use existing infra, but it also means we have less code to maintain and worry about in the long run. I think for something to move from contrib into core, it needs to have a, a someone to do code reviews and maintenance on it. You know, someone who will actually be kind of on call for any PRs that come in on that or et cetera. Yeah, yeah, but it's not just that. Again, like yeah. we've, we've put a lot of work into the upstream connection management so that it can be shared and we can have like the one code base that just works and handles prefetching and health checks and yeah. kind of no, no, all, no, all I, the puzzles. I'm like reinventing that, yeah. like that, that, that's agree. never letting more. Yeah, 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 no, fully in agreement on that. But the question is, do we allow things like that to land in contrib? Because it's obviously easier to do to, to write a connection manager from scratch than to figure out how to plug a codec in an existing one. I, yeah. I would be- No, that's, a, that's a good question. And I, yeah, uh, there's not a clear answer for what the bar is for code going in there. I would tend to keep it fairly similar. I feel like if, if we start a pattern of people kind of one-off and they start one-off things that that we've done for general security and reliability and scalability, it's going to end up causing us more trouble than it's worth in the long run. I think that's true. I think the trade-off is to get the code into a good shape will require a lot more interaction from maintainers more familiar with Envoy to spot that this is a thing that Envoy already does. And so you need to rework this to do it the right way. Yeah, I guess it would, it would certainly, it has to be best effort. Yeah. Did we have any volunteers to actually create Contrib and, and set that all up? No, I think um, um, there's probably, I, I think setting it all up is, is probably the, the easiest part. I think the hardest part is probably just come up with the policy and clearly explain that, you know, this is what we're doing it for and this is how it works. Um, we need and, a policy. You know, Where's Harvey? <laughs> yes, uh, that's that's true. Yes, uh, you know, like clearly explain, you know, why something will go to contrib versus the, um, you know, into the into the regular repo. I, I think there's probably also a bigger question, and uh, I, um, which I, I don't have the answer for, is do we do we actually want to have every filter that you know. This filter is fairly vendor specific, right? There might be like one or two vendors who are interested in, uh, you know, ever ever using this technology. Should it go into the main Envoy repository, or, you know, like what's is there some bar on how common the use of the filter would be, or do we not want to have that bar at all? And anybody can put their filter, even if it's just even even if they're the only user of that. Yeah, I would I would say we'd want we'd want it to be actually used by more than one person. I mean, if you want to run your own filter, run your own filter internally. Um, to Solters's question, I, I think we don't know where Contrib would live. I I would lean towards treating it like external filter examples. It would be something that we would make sure that we build. So if we do like a major API change, you're responsible for updating those filters APIs. But I would be inclined to have it be a separate repo just because if it's in the same repo, GitHub won't let other people merge it. Um, which is a problem, uh, but I don't know. I mean, if we do that, it, kind of either way, we're going to have to have a, a governance board of of who who gets. You know, fine, we we have a new repo. Who gets to commit to it? Can people stomp on each other's code? Like, how do we make sure people are good citizens? Um, are there other yeah, projects I mean, also we the... can kind of borrow from for for policy? Do we know if if you know Kubernetes or Istio or anyone else has hit issues like this? Yeah, if I can, if I can add two cents to, to this conversation. So I recently, totally. I, I recently changed an API for access log, uh, and Jan reviewed it. And yesterday, I got pinged by someone from, I think it was Pinterest, that there was an external filter which was maintained outside of the main repo, and this API changed the signature of the method, basically broke the build. So. The good thing is that if everything is in a one place and we can recompile, then changing an API basically catches all the errors. Uh, but if we don't, 
uh, if the filters are or whatever is, is kept outside of the main any changes are basically kind of uh, unforeseen so i don't i don't a major change can actually break a lot of filters so yeah so there might be a specific so if the api changes uh, there might probably uh, if there is a if there are some functions which remap all signatures to the new one and they kept for a while then we're pretty much sure that we are not breaking external filters but uh, if this is uh, not kept in check it's very easy to affect other people outside of the main repo no that's totally fair and i think there's a separate issue which is kind of related but separate about having stability of the include directories right where right now you can just add a new pa on for access logs or for filters or whatnot um but at some point we probably have to do the you know, rather than change a function signature or add a required thing, do it add an optional or, you know, add a, a new, the, the new signature, mark the old and deprecated it, et cetera. And so we've talked about that and, and I think we'll hit a point where it causes enough problems where we'll have to have that stability. Um, oh, it causes enough problems. It does. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even internally, it's not, the, this problem that you describe is not just unique to Pinterest. I mean, we at Google hit this, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say often, but we hit it enough for it to actually be, it is on my radar and I just unfortunately didn't have time to put together my thoughts on how to manage this effectively because there's obviously a, a you know, a tension between velocity and, uh, you know, backward compatibility for something, you know, that's sort of considered an internal mm -hmm. API. Uh, but I think Contrib is somewhat of a different you know, I, I don't think it's designed to solve this problem. It's mostly designed to solve the scalability problem, you know, and velocity of somebody being able to open source something that may be shared between a couple of vendors, uh, but doesn't, you know, impact maintainers, doesn't put maintainers on the hook of reviewing something that they might not be, you know, entirely familiar with. Yeah, I mean, I think it's basically unfortunate that that this question came up again when Matt's out because he's done a lot of thought of what he wants the shape of that to be. It may worth, it may be worth kind of just revisiting and pinging him because I know he is checking in on leave, uh, and he's okay. probably going to have the more formed ideas of of what we should do in this space. So if we think that this new series of PRs is the point at which it's make or break, and and hopefully we've got Ryan now who's amazing at setting up new tooling, and we can kind of throw some of the the uh, the work of setting it up to him. I think. Um, I think we could actually make this happen finally. Okay. I mean, I, I think for short term, we should, and I think Harvey already pinged them uh, to say that they need to find a sponsoring maintainer who will actually do, because the PR is in a, you know, a fairly rough shape. It has no unit tests at all. Like, even, no, but, like basically but regardless like of the PR shape, that is Envoy extension policy. If we don't have Contrib and they want to land something in Envoy, they have to have a maintainer sponsor. And if, right. you know, if there isn't one, then... Currently, there's no contrib. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that said, you know, it's it's the reason we want to kick off contrib so that there is an ability to share things that that it doesn't meet the bar of like, oh yeah, that seems totally, totally like a huge value add to Envoy and you know, one of us will throw ourselves on the reviews in perpetuity. Okay. All right. So I guess for them, the short term right now is to find actual the sponsoring maintainer and uh, mm -hmm. you know get get it moving right now okay makes sense uh yeah it, it certainly puts the pressure away from it, it, you know does it relieves the pressure on actually creating contrib and we can sort it out later and probably look at some other large uh, open source projects and see how they manage stuff like this yeah. because yeah okay. kubernetes and uh, istio both have plugin architectures and i'm sure people wrote plugins that are you know the similar sort of kind similar category sense cool other things we want to discuss while we're here going once going twice see y'all in two weeks thank you bye-bye i appreciate it